So I'm going to try this one more time. I've tried this like five times and every time somebody freaking calls. Okay. So when you're going to take the test, you've all seen me take the SIE exam, the series seven exam, the series six, 63 and 66 exam. And you see how I take it. And I know people say it helps. I'm going to try to do this in one thing. So let's talk about how to take the exam. You got to take savage. You got to take it like a savage. Okay. What that means is you got to go in there and not worry about shit. Just to me and be like, cool, calm, let shit happen. Whatever happens, happens. And remember something, the test is written to make you feel like you're failing. I can't say that enough. The test is written to make you feel like you're failing. What does that mean? There's no right answer. There's always a right answer, but sometimes it doesn't look like it. You're trying to find the best answer, not the perfect answer. Like they'll ask a question and you'll see four answers that none of them work, but one looks a little bit better than the other. So that is going to be, that's going to, you pick that, but here's the problem. Here's why you feel like you're failing. Again, best answer, not right answer. If you have four bad answers, pick the least worst. Here's why it makes you feel like you're failing. What happens is you are going to pick that one best answer. You're not sure. Little tweaky in your head going, subconscious is saying, hey, I don't know if it's, I don't know if this is the right answer. You do that three or four in a row. In your head, your subconscious goes, well, you got those four wrong. So what's going to happen is in your mind, you just got four wrong in a row when you probably got three or four of them right, just because you know your shit and it doesn't fit. So you think you're wrong. And then you do that the whole test and you feel like you're failing. I literally had two girls, horror, horror stories. One girl, when the test was longer, it was a you know 250 question test. They got a break in the middle. And luckily her exam was at, on third half. My office was right a block away. She called me and said, I'm not going back in. I failed everything. I didn't get a single right. She's crying. I go over there. I force her to go back in, say, just finish it out. Let's finish it, see what happens. She comes out, she got a 73. She passed because she they, they got into her head so much. They weren't really hard questions. She obviously knew them, but they made her think she didn't know her shit. So that's why she was screwed up. So that's one. The other one is this is the worst of worst. Girl, knew her shit, getting 80s, 90s, my exams, Kaplan exams, all that stuff. And then she called me up after she took it and she goes, I failed. Got a 71 and hung up. I tried to call her back, text her back. No response, no response at all. So what happened? She called me up two weeks later and goes, hey, let's go. And I was like, wait a second. We cannot just do that. After you hung up on me and taught, made it me feel horrible that I caused it. She goes, no, it's not your fault. I go, why? She said, I know that you told me I'm going to feel like I'm failing the whole time. But I didn't believe you. I thought you're an idiot. You're wrong. So the whole test, I think I'm failing. And I go, Ken's an idiot. I'm failing. I don't know my shit. He's the worst ever. So about question 110. And my family feels that way. So about question 105, 110, she goes, screw it, I'm out of here. She just hit B to finish the whole way through, to mailed it in. Remember what her score was? She got a 71. So she actually was probably in the mid 80s when she thought she she was getting killed. So don't give up. Like you, Look, if you go in there and she ended up killing it the next time, she said it was easy exam ever because she studied harder and she did it and she knew her shit. She just, not, and then she trusted me that you're not going to feel good the whole time. So let's move on. So now let's talk about what you do if you get it right. Okay, so let's say I do it, I can get it right. Here's how I look at the question. You got to read everything, every freaking word. Read the entire question, read all four choices. The entire question, all four choices. I even tell some people, if you can't do that, read the four choices first, then read the answer. Because you don't want to get it stuck in the old, oh, I answer, I look at the question, you're doing the math in your head, and it's not a math question. You know how often that happens with the options and stuff? They're asking you all this stuff, throwing your numbers, and it's not a math question. You just wasted all the time. You could have been on to the next one. Because remember, you get a minute and a half. So read everything. Make sure you read every word. And also, if you see an answer, if any part of the answer is wrong, the entire answer is wrong. Let me explain. Let me explain. So I had a question once that showed up and said, A, was New York Stock Exchange stocks are ex exempt from state registration, which is true. That part's true. Because the SEC approved them. That part's not true. Okay. That part's not true. So that means the entire answer is wrong. Remember that. So don't skim. You got to read every word. I say that all the time. Yeah, people say read the fucking question. Read every damn word. You got to read every damn word and try to think what they're asking. Think what are they asking? Don't just think, oh, oh, plus, plus, plus. No, think that. Go to try to say what are they trying to do? When you're taking this exam, it's going to make you feel bad. And look, if you go in there memorizing, just trying to memorize shit, you feel like you're failing. Might be true. OK, but if you go in there knowing your shit and you feel confident, and you go in there and you all of a sudden go, oh, my God, I feel like I'm taking the wrong exam. The wording's different, but I'm kind of working through it. That feels uncomfortable, but that is right. You're going to pass. You're passing, okay? So remember that. So now let's get into it. One, mark for review. I fucking hate it. We'll get back to it when you should do it, when you shouldn't do it. Let's move on. So when you go in there, you sit down and you look at a question. I do what they call triage. Triage is where you look at the question, 
You look at the question and go, okay, I think I can do it or I think I can't. If I think I can answer it, just answer it and move on. If you don't think you can answer it, just answer it and move on. Let it go. And just don't worry about it. Don't spend five minutes. You'll know within 10 seconds whether you know your shit, whether you can answer it or not. If you can't, pick an answer. If it takes you a minute to answer a question right, that's fine. But if it takes you a minute to answer a question wrong that you don't know, that's bad. Okay? So it's about timing. You don't want to run out of time. And once you pick an answer and you feel good about it, move on. Don't don't clog up the mark for review with shit. There's just a couple things you have to do with mark for review. Now, let's talk about mark for review for a second. Mark for review is where you get to, you get to click, pick an answer and you mark for review and you can come back to it later before you hit submit. It'll remind you that you have stuff in the queue. And I'll show you how to handle because a lot of people say, hey, wait, I want to put it in mark for review if I don't know it so that if it comes up later, I can, um, I can, I can answer it. No, I'm not a fan of that. This is my idea. And it doesn't have to work, but it's, I'm crazy. There's only two things that go on Mark for review. One, if it's really freaking long, that you think you can get it, but it's really long, and you go, okay, I can do this when it, it's going to take me three or four minutes to work through it. Put it in the review, come back to it later, and this is why. Because if you spend four minutes getting that one right, or five minutes, and you get it right, that's great. But at the end, you start running out of time. You may speed up through the last 30 questions because you're rushing, and you're going to miss more of those. You may miss four or five questions because you ran out of time because you're worried about the big one. So if you see a really big one that you think you can get, mark for review, throw it in the vault, come back to it later. And then you can, you may have 20 minutes to spend 20 minutes on a question. The second one is if you're truly 50-50, not 70-30, not 60-40, truly 50-50. Like, you know, like if you see a question, you go, oh, it's probably B. But, oh, it might be D. It's never the, oh, it might be. It's going to be the B, okay? 90% of the time, I'm making up f***ing numbers. But most of the time, the first, your gut that you most likely think it is, that's the answer. Because you've done the, a knowledge. If you're guessing, well, you're shit out of luck. But it's never the, oh, it might be. So don't go that way. Just pick the answer and go on. When I mean 50-50, I mean truly, oh, my God, B and D, I can't tell the difference between them. I don't know. That's, instead of spending three minutes going, I don't know, pick an answer, mark for review, and go to it. Because if, say you run out of time and you have to rush through at the end anyway, at least they're answered and you have more questions done. So that's my mark for review strategy. But let's add something in. They always say this. They go, hey, what about what if I answer it wrong and later I get it? So here's here's how you fix the, the what if I get it wrong? What if I get it wrong and I have see an answer later? Say question number 10, you get you 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 go, I don't know what it is, and boom. Question 54 goes, Oh my God, that reminds me tw- 10 was good. Well, you don't remember what number it is. There's no shot. So instead of going back and wasting time, write the number down, write 58 down and maybe a little thing like, oh, it's on preemptive rights. Then finish the exam. Then you can go back and search for 58 that you wrote down and work your way back because it's never as close as you think it is. You're going to think it's like 10 behind you. It's probably 30 questions back. So you're going to spend five, six minutes trying to find the question and you're going to lose time. So get the question done. Okay. Get the question done. Then go back. There's one strategy that I hate, but I have a lot. I have a student doing it tomorrow, but there are some students that do this. I hate it. But if you're anxious about what's coming up, it's actually, I guess it's okay. What they do is they see the questions. They answer them gut feeling all the way through to get through it in like an hour. Just go through all the questions, maybe an hour and 20 minutes, and just get through it so they see everything, okay? Now they know what the test is. Then they go back and rechange everything. I hate that, but I have at least two students that it worked for because they were anxious, okay? That was the problem. They were really anxious about it, and that helped them relieve the anxiety because what happened is they, lo- they they saw everything. There was no unknown, and they did it. Again, I'm not a fan of that, but it does work. So let's make sure we got this down. You look at the, you read the question, everything, the answer and all four choices, or do the four choices and the answers. Then you pick an answer and you move on. If you don't know it, pick an answer and move on. Don't worry about it. Mark review should not be that big. Everyone says, how many questions should I do a mark review? I don't. I don't do that many, okay? Maybe there's five or six, whatever it is. But if you have, if you put all your wrong answers in the mark review, you're going to clog that up and not get to the ones you actually have a chance on. Look, I'm just saying, you got this. Take your time. Oh, before you hit submit, I, this is the big one. Before you hit submit, thank God you didn't go. Before you hit submit, before you hit submit, I'm going to say that 3,000 times. You go back and check the first five to 10 questions. That is when you're not in the zone. You're still outside. You're still thinking about other things. The cute guy, the cute girl, the person being rude. Whatever it is, you're not on the zone. You're thinking, oh, my God, what if I fail? What if I don't? Remember, don't think fail. Think positive, okay? Always think good, no matter what you do. Now, on that note, go back and check the first five. But again, here's my thing about changing answers. Don't do it. Unless unless you go, oh, my God, you read that and go, what, what was I thinking? The bar is set as, oh, my God, I'm an idiot. Don't 
what am I thinking? You didn't even read the damn question. That is anything lower than that. Don't change the answer. 